Well, hello there. I didn't see you come in. Make yourself at home. Have a drink. While I give some attention to some underappreciated characters and storylines that I personally love. And I hope you grow to love as well. Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Matt's Minis. Today, we're reading Swamp Thing number 36, uh, which is the second part of the Nuke Face Papers, is what the name of this uh, run is called, this little story. Uh, written by Alan Moore, art by Stephen Bissett, and John Total Ben. And as you can tell, uh, I was a little under the weather this week, so don't mind my uh, husky voice. In fact, enjoy it, because it sounds like Burr White. So, uh... <laughs> Uh, yeah, anyway, uh, first things first, on this cover, we see uh, Nuke Face is walking, or the shadow of Nuke Face is, is walking, uh, the figure is walking in some kind of industrialized town that is now derelict, and there's a bunch of bodies, or, or there's one big body, I guess, laying uh, melted, it looks like Swamp Thing's body, actually, but it has bones and stuff, uh, but it looks like, uh, like a, a dried out skeleton, and then there's papers and uh all kinds of dust and everything blowing in the background so looks like we're just getting continuing of the last one uh so like i said it's the nuke face papers part two and we see swamp thing starts off just where he was before his body is decomposing in the areas that nuke face touched him and poured that toxic waste down his throat so uh we see Swamp Thing is literally falling apart. His arm comes off. Like, after a couple hours, he's trying to reach out to Abby, like, I don't know, telepathically or through the green or something. He's trying to reach out to her, but she is asleep. And uh, and he's just like, Abby, please. She doesn't answer, but I need her. My body, it's rotting. And uh, so, yeah, he's stuck in this body. His arm's falling off. His there's like holes forming in his chest and his torso and his uh like lower abdomen and uh the longer it goes the more he gets dissolved and then he says oh like i see someone calling out in the woods and eventually she finds me and he and she points the flashlight at him and she's like oh my god you're still alive and he's like abby don't come c closer poison and we see that his face is almost like melting off now too. And as he's saying, uh, as he's talking to her, he's like, don't worry, like body will be gone, but listen carefully, can't talk much longer. And then it says, uh, and then when I tell her what I plan to do, my jaw falls off. <laughs> so basically he can't talk anymore. And he, he told her what he plans to do. Then we cut to, um, later or i guess earlier this this day in the town where stuff is going on we see uh the the kid wallace from uh he moved here from pennsylvania with his wife treasure and uh they just came into town because he's working for this company that is dumping toxic waste they had been dumping toxic waste in i guess philadelphia or pennsylvania somewhere and um and now they've moved south to Louisiana to dump it into the swamp. And he knew about it. He was like, oh, they said it was safe to dump it up there. But now we're going to dump it down here. No problem. Uh, and then uh, he you know, goes through his whole day where all of a sudden he sees kids, you know, talking about nuke face uh, after or at first he sees people in the town talking about vagrants going missing, just like in Philadelphia or in, in Pennsylvania. And then he walks through the town and he sees kids playing nuke face. And he's like, what? How do they know that? And he starts yelling at them. And then uh, he's like, I'm going to go out for a walk. I need to clear my head. And then he comes back and, sh and his wife is like, hey, I want to go look for you and buy milk. Uh, if, you go if you get home before me, stay put. And, and then he's like, what? And he's got to find her. So he goes out looking for her. And then uh, he finds her and and he says, just for a moment, I was so happy. And then I asked where you'd been and you told me. And he's like, Treasure, please. Her name's Treasure. Uh, please don't look at me like that. And like, uh, he's like, I can't, I can no longer uh, bear the sight of your eyes. I turned and begin to run. And so he, we don't know why, but he's like freaking out about finding his wife and no one else is coming close to her. And then we cut to... 
the lady na- known as Mr. Miss Morell, who runs the, uh, I guess it's the the inn where everybody was staying, uh, or the hotel. But basically, the the man who died in the last one, who got his face melted off, I believe his name was Bob. He was the kind of vagrant who got kicked out of his house because who got stabbed actually by Miss Morell when they had an argument. She's like. You know, we were having an argument, and I kicked him out, and I just happened to have my uh, nail file in my hands when I pushed him, and it accidentally stabbed him a little bit, but not, you know, it wasn't on purpose. Uh, anyway, what's going on? And they're like, oh, we found his body. We need you to identify him. And then they open, or they take off the sheet, and she's like, oh, my God. And then we find out, eh, from the way she's reacting, it was more than just like a, 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 a management you know, tenant situation with them or landlord tenant. It was, uh, you know, they obviously had a relationship, uh, where they were, uh, if, if not in love, they were somewhat like, you know, fooling around or whatnot, maybe, um, maybe, you know, building some kind of relationship with each other. So she starts crying and was like, Oh God, I threw him out. And that's why he died. And, uh, so he's like all melted and everything. Uh, and then, we cut back to treasure and we were like, basically it's kind of going back at the beginning of the day for everybody. And she's recounting the events. Like she saw them, uh, where she saw like her husband talk to the people in the, in the city when they talk about the vagrants being going missing and then how he was acting weird. And so that's why he went for a walk. And then she was like, Oh, and then I was just trying to find you. Uh, and then I was like, Oh, I'll go buy milk too. And so she went to go buy milk. But when she did that, she cut through the, uh, swamp, on her way home and then saw uh, an old an old man who looked like he was in need and he was passed out and who it is it's old nuke face uh he is passed out on the ground where uh i guess swamp thing or close to where swamp thing was left uh because he gave swamp thing his last juice and then he got mad that uh that the the, the toxic waste was buried in the mud so he uh he passes out uh and then so he's all irradiated and everything he's glowing and she sees this and she's like well what would god do you know what would jesus do he would help the sick you know this man was poor and he's freezing outside so what would jesus do i'm gonna lay down next to him and try to keep him warm now keep in mind treasure is pregnant with this kid wallace his son you know her husband's son and uh, they're young, you know, budding couple that just moved here because the company that Wallace worked for moved him down here and they had their whole lives ahead of him. So, uh, she lays down next to this glowing man, you know, gives her jacket to him to keep him warm and then tries to lay down next to him to keep him warm. Uh, and then, you know, she gets up in the morning and then everybody finds her and they're like, Oh, we were looking all over for you. Where have you been? And, uh, and he's like, she's like, Oh, I told you about the tramp. And uh, everything's in your face suddenly turned cold. And, and he was like, you laid down next to him all night and he was glowing. And she's like, yes, well, he was ill, Wallace. What's wrong? And they're like, oh, my God, we found those footprints that were glowing. <laughs> and then like, oh, my God, like you're pregnant and you stayed next to this like dude who was basically like nuclear waste. Uh, and so like they're they're saying basically the baby, like none of them want to go near her because now she's like. Uh, now she's not glowing or anything, but you know, they're, they're saying she's been contaminated and she's like, Wallace, what, what have I done wrong? As he runs away and, uh, they're insinuating that the baby is going to have issues now. And, uh, we cut to a couple of the other people in the town, kind of like with their day and what happened to them, like one of the kids and stuff. Um, but yeah, basically we also learned about swamp thing. Um, and like, basically this issue kind of sets up one of his new powers where he's like, basically he tells her what's going on. Like when Abby finds him melted, he says like, Abby, don't come any closer poison. And then he tells her what he's going to try to do. And what he's going to try to do is he's like, my body is dying. Uh, I don't have much longer. I'm going to try to leave my body, send my mind into the green and then grow a new body. And so uh, he's like, I don't know if it'll work. I'll see you soon. If it doesn't, I love you, Abby. And so, uh, she's like, you could die. He's like, I, I don't know. I've never done it before. And so, uh, yeah, he's basically letting his body die and he's going to send his consciousness into the green. We do see that his, uh, new body or his old body is like totally decomposed now once his consciousness leaves and it even goes like, like, you know, just like plant goop falling apart. And I guess that's like the kind of the skeleton we see on the, on the cover. And then she starts crying cause he doesn't answer anymore. 
Um, and we don't really know what happens, but Nuke Face, you know, we cut to him in his day and he's all mad at Swamp Thing for taking his last, last, uh, drink of that, uh, last swig of the drink. And then he's like, uh, you know, runs into one of the kids and then, uh, you know, he talks about trying to find this stuff and he's like, don't worry. It's in every town and every street. I'll find it somewhere. He's like, America, here I come. And then we get like all these newspaper clippings of like, oh, hazardous waste and toxic illness found in this city. And so Alan Moore is kind of t- giving his uh, his opinion on uh, toxic waste pollution and how we should uh, not be polluting the environment. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of like how he shows it with Nuke Face. And uh, Nuke Face is very happy, though, because he's like, oh, I can find this stuff anywhere I want in America because... It's all over in every city. I can find all this waste. So uh, he's got no problem uh, finding it now. And he walks off into, I guess, the the rest of America to find some toxic waste to drink. So, so and that's the end of that issue. So pretty short issue. Uh, pretty interesting. Like he basically kind of tells it from like 10 different people's point of view. So you, so it's not so fast kind of thing. But, uh, but we do mainly that issue is to show his stance on, you know, uh, pollution and that kind of stuff for the environment. And then also to showcase, uh, Swamp Thing's new powers. Now that he kind of knows he's, you know, he can go in the green and whatnot and all that stuff. Um, you know, can he grow a new body? If, can he move his consciousness around and all that kind of stuff? So, uh, we'll see next time if he can. Um, and if you guys have any comments, questions, or suggestions, you can email me at planes, trains, and comic books, all one word at gmail.com. And until next time, stay swampy.